Hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here, and I am the audiophiliac. How many speakers, come on, how many speakers does anybody really need to listen to music? Well, in the beginning, in the beginning, there was one. All you needed was one speaker from Thomas Edison through 1957 or so, late 50s. One speaker was good. Pretty much that's what you got. One speaker, all recordings were mono. All movies, well, not all movies, most movies were mono. One was the number. And then comes stereo in the late 50s, and now two. You needed two speakers. Uh, okay, uh, stereo wasn't an overnight sensation, but it, it gradually became the dominant format. So even people that weren't audiophiles or there wasn't, the word didn't exist yet, but people who were seriously listening to music, you know, um, most people weren't, but they still felt like they needed to have two speakers, and that's what they had. Everybody had stereo speakers. Um, and that, that was nice. A lot of stereo recordings. Stereo recordings became the norm. Mono recordings sort of faded away and were good. Then we get to the 1970s and we have quad, four speakers. Now, quad was definitely a, an audiophile pursuit and uh, there were a lot of record companies making quadraphonic recordings on LP and also on different tape formats. But it, it kind of, it didn't die that fast though it probably should have. It, it Quadraphonic sort of made it through the 80s, uh, the 70s, and, uh, and then fizzled away without a trace. And uh, Well, until we had surround in music. But before the whole music thing happened, really, um, uh, after quad, we had home theater in various versions. So actually, well, stereo television didn't arrive until the mid 80s, the MTS system. So I think Johnny Carson was the first uh, regularly scheduled program that was in stereo. And I think MTV eventually got their, their act together and had stereo for music television. Um, and then of course comes home theater and movies and then movies had were originally in stereo on tape and then they became surround sort of kind of with ProLogic. And that was sort of like five, Point one um, for a while, but then it became it. With, it was ProLogic, and then later Pro Digi uh, Adobe uh, Digital, which was uh, Matrix, which was discrete multi-channel, and of course DTS. And then that that kind of hung in there, more or less is is still really there, right? Although later on we had uh, you know well more recently we've had Dolby Atmos for height channel speakers that seem to be sticking around. Uh, so there's more and more speakers. But in the real world, most people have now gone back to one, you know, one soundbar speaker, maybe with a sub. So we're back to the one speaker. We're kind of back where we started, right? <laughs> one speaker from Thomas Edison through 1957. Really long time. One speaker was the magic number, right? So all these things that I'm thinking, well... Must be tough for speaker manufacturers because they went from get, getting used to selling one speaker to then two speakers, then a lot of speakers for home theater and stuff. And then that started to fade with home theater in a box. People didn't feel a need to go out and buy speakers from actual speaker companies. They were buying home theater in a box systems that were made by Sony and Samsung and Vizio or whatever. So they weren't really speaker companies making home theater in a box systems. So the, the traditional speaker companies were sort of shut out of that market. And then uh, things keep changing. And now we're in the age of, uh, getting back to the present, smart speakers, like the, the, the Apple HomePod and the Google Home Max and the Sonos Ones. So great, you can talk to your speakers, but the number really is one. One, one smart speaker is all you need to, if you wanna know what, temp what the temperature is outside or you wonder what year Merrill Monroe was born, one smart speaker is gonna get you the answer. And play tunes and podcasts and things like that. So we went from one to two to four, and then 5.1, and then back to one with the sound bar, and now one again with uh, smart speakers. I don't know, man. And, and the price of these things has to keep going down. Like the, the HomePod and the Google Max, the, home, the HomePod is $350, Google Max is $400. They ain't going anywhere. Those prices have to go way down. There's no money in selling speakers, is my point. Uh, people 
for most people, unless they're audiophiles, unless they're one of us, we're smart, hip uh, audiophile people, uh, the magic number is one for as small as and possibly be, as the smallest size possible and for the lowest possible price. Sound quality is not really part of the equation, except for uh, the audiophile companies, and they are small in number and small in stature. Well, stature, small in size, small in uh, profits and stuff like that. But they still care about making quality speakers. They're still holding on for to stereo. I don't see anybody making uh, mono uh, high-end speakers, really. So I think we're, we're holding steady with stereo. We'll see how that goes in the long run. Uh, anyway, that's just my opinion, of course, as everything is. Um, this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. My name is Steve Guttenberg. I am your host. And uh, please come back often. Subscribe if you like this sort of thing. See ya.